traders, welcome to this video. Will Sebastian here from The Trading Mentor. Don't forget, if you go underneath, you can come and join us on Zoom Live today. I'll be teaching the Academy. Again, we'll be covering things like this, but more in detail with trading plans. So it's underneath. Um, Euros, uh, all of them massively affected. Your Euro dollar, well down. I mean, you had your drop initially with slight rejection yesterday. But then you've just had another day opening up with a big, big drop on current rhetoric. The most important rhetoric being from the ECB today that they want a divergence from the US, or it's time to diverge from the US. What they're saying is the tone coming out of the US about you know things being hawkish or, or um, rates higher for longer is not really where they're sitting. You know they're sitting at coming out of this problem quicker, um, and they they're saying things are sort of okay. Now, of course, the reason why that effect from the ECB is pulling your euros down. I mean, if you look at all your euros, not just the euro dollar, your euro ord, your euro New Zealand, your euro CAD, um, is because as the you know the bets or the hopefulness, if, if you like, of uh, rates uh, coming back down in the eurozone occurs, obviously that removes the the one or the demand for euros because if you're not going to get paid such a such a good rate you'll pull your money out of it now like i said the key news today this morning is that the ecb is talking about diverging from the us they said it's time to diverge from the us so what that basically means is they're giving the instruction to traders to pull the money out of the euro and put it in the us dollar the divergence they're referring to comes from the US struggling a bit more inflation wise or with rates um, and the Eurozone not having that problem. They look like they're more on track. Um, there was a few questions at the ECB conference in regards to uh, you know, a worry about the devaluing of the Euro once the dollar, maybe a drop below parity or something like that. But whether that actually occurs or not, you know, is yet to be seen. You obviously had that when uh, traders treated the dollar as a safe haven asset within inflation uh, you know, ramping up because they led the way for those rate hikes. But it's a really rocky surface now. Um, you know, in the US, they started off the year six rate cuts, six rate cuts, they said, then it was four, three, two, one, zero, and now potentially a rate hike. Okay, so obviously what's happening is that hawkish tone that's feeding into the rhetoric coming out of the Fed is improving dollar sentiment or demand or bias for the dollar. So people are piling in to buy it. That's why the euro is coming down. Now, if you're looking at a euro pair that isn't based against the dollar, even your euro CAD, your New Zealand euro ord, particularly anti badian ones, um, you're also pulling down because the, the, the effect is the same. If the ECB is more confident about their ability to bring down rates quicker, okay, it provides less incentive for euro investors. Currency markets move on this. They live off this stuff. They want to know what a central bank is doing and how that's controlling the flow of money in an economy. If you ease rates, there is less saving to be done. Of course, that pulls down the value. So analysing the events like the ECB and the effects that are, that are more likely now is so important in trading. Because, uh, you know, for example, if you were looking to get long at this level of support, let's say you wanted it long there, You've got minor rejection at the moment, absolutely. You are seeing somewhat of a candle wick. Um, but you also know that you're trading into the weakness for the euro. So what you might do is deviate your size. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into the exact size because that's what we, we get paid for to teach people. But either you wouldn't go in now or you might even just let things rise. You know, you might just let things come lower because you know at this point the picture looks good for the eurozone um, in terms of their you know they're, they're coming out of this problem inflation wise and therefore the easing of rates so you know there's a good chance they you know you may get further falls it doesn't mean you should short it however because naturally as a trader if you're selling this you're selling into what is a demand zone if you like or flip zone or key price action zone Okay, you're selling into where people will still be buying, even despite this sentiment. If you've got negative sentiment, it doesn't mean the market can't bounce in between. Okay, you know, just like you've had here, even within this initial drift to the downside from uh, 109.825 to 107.24. Okay, 
So you've got a reasonable amount of movement there. Um, you know, 250 pips or so. You've still got rebounds on every every single fall, and that's because you still get buying power within um, falls that occur. You know, it's not going to be the case that when you've got negative sentiment, you don't get any relinquishing, or you know, you don't get any sort of uh, let off on on demand. It still occurs, um, but you can see what is really pulling this is that divesting in the euro and the positive dollar sentiment, which which basically kicked it all off in regards to the Fed and inflation coming in hot. So, you know, if you're looking to trade ECB news, you're not, you shouldn't be waiting for them to speak and then be hitting the button as it, you know, as it's coming out and guessing where price is going to go. Could have easily been the other way. You know, it might be data dependent, but the ECB could have said something else, which obviously then would have fed into that euro strength rather than euro weakness. So it's so important to, uh, to, to get that, you know, preempting news and guessing news is useless. Um, in this case, if you were looking at the ECB press conference and what to do in terms of investment going in or going forward, you would really be relying on understanding, uh, particularly the fact that you've now got um, divesting, like I said, of the euro or dumping of the euro, and then make your decision based on that. So how much are you going to buy? Are you going to look for a chance to buy within that fall? You know, not a bad idea, even though there's negative sentiment. You're, you know, you're always going to be long before the negative sentiment ends. But you might just decide to, to hold off. You might just decide to take a lower size. There's all sorts of things you can do to help yourself from a basic perspective. Basic perspective. Of course, if you don't get the sizes right and you don't understand the technical aspects within that, if you're going to struggle. Um, and that's obviously, like I said, what we teach. So, you know, at this point, ECB, not just the euro dollar, I mean, it's doubled really with the euro dollar because of the sentiment around the dollar. The same is occurring with Antipodean um, currencies, New Zealand and ORD. You've got the sentiment bias there. So I wouldn't be entirely shocked if within this ranging momentum or this ranging price action you've seen, you know, you return around here perhaps, okay, and you go in line with this. Um, you know, if you look at your euro ord, I wouldn't be shocked either if you can sort of reach lower into this too. There isn't a great deal of key price action in the way um, until you get here either. So what's happening is I'm using the news to make a judgment in the future because the news is what controls markets ultimately if you are really risk averse you could just not invest until 1593 and that would continue the new forming downtrend so if you find that the uh, australia reserve bank is slower with their changes then you do end up here okay and you will then have to go off key price action that, so that um, exists around there, okay? And again, that would form somewhat of the sideways trajectory which you have experienced anyway on your, um, on your Euro award. If you can see the mean, really, if you like, is between these ranges, despite these big pops to the upside on rash sentiment and rash moves. So, you know, make sure that when you do start trading things that, concern the ECB conference, you're well in touch with the idea that if you're, you know, if you're, if you're gambling, basically, if you were long before the ECB conference, because you thought there was going to be a hawkish tone, you'd suffer enormously, especially when you've got the, the other currency in the equation, the dollar, getting such sentiment inflows um, in terms of demand. Uh, the best thing to do is wait. What does the Eurozone say? What does the ECB team say? Well, they say, okay, well, you know, things look okay. And it's likely, therefore, you might see continued pressure on the Euro. And you might say, you know what? Okay, well, I'm, I need a better price then. You know, if there's more pressure on that currency, I want to see it go further so I get a better chance of success. Okay. It's all about probability. And naturally, if you're trading counter sentiment, you're not doing anything wrong. We do it all day. You know, we trade counter sentiment all day, but you have to be doing it in proportion to reality, um, uh, you know, many times. So we covered the ECB live in our live room the whole way and watched it together. Um, today, I'll be going over those comments, assessing markets. You can get it underneath. Don't forget to get on board. I'll see you soon.